We're at Ovum's headquarters in London. I'm here with Alex Harrowell. He's a senior analyst on the team. Alex, good to see you. Good to see you, Ray. Um, I'm heading for MWC this year in the hope that we'll see what answers the industry has to an increasingly worrying macroeconomic outlook. We saw volumes cut at Apple. We saw disappointing results from Samsung. Right. We saw warnings across the chip-making sector about demand from both PCs, from, from, well, well, from PCs, from smartphones, and also from the cloud. There appears to be, in general, a sector-wide sector -wide downturn in progress. On the other hand, though, the big news is 5G. It was last year, it is this year. Uh -huh. And we do see some evidence of this. The Xilinx, a chip maker which specializes in FG, FPGA chips, which go into the base stations for 5G, saw, rather, saw very good results, right. implying that there is, in fact, significant spending filtering through on the 5G infrastructure. To make this happen, to make this worthwhile, primarily to the enterprise. Right, as which is your area of expertise, right? They're sort of enterprise use cases. And Absolutely. Now, last year, there, were a lot of, there was a lot of talk about this, but there was surprisingly little sign of any real applications that enterprises might use. Right. So this is primarily what I'm looking for, is real engagement with the enterprises themselves. As usual, there will be, I expect there will be a drone, there will be robots, <laughs> yes. there will be a self-driving car, I suspect. <laughs> but the problem with these but things... Do enterprises really, is that what they want to see? What do they, or do they want to hear something that might be perceived to be more boring, but actually more pragmatic? That's what that would be about right. But one thing I, do, I would like to see would be more engagement with actual customer industries. Right. The problem with the, the, problem with the, with the classic MWC demonstrator projects, with the self-driving drones, etc., is that they have the property, is that they're easy to demonstrate. So engineers come up with use cases to demonstrate the technology and therefore, and therefore we, we, we select these things because they make a nice demonstrator on your stand. And this does not mean they're, they're especially relevant to anybody in the real world. Right. Or come with a ready-made business case. No. But one thing I would like to see is, and I'm seeing some signs of this, is a, a greater degree of interest in sort of low in competing with in competing with the Wi-Fi sector. Okay. In doing local local and private networks in in five G and also in LTE. Right. And bring, and also bringing these together with wide area with wide area connectivity. A lot of process and, ma and manufacturing based industries would very much like to get rid of get rid of. Uh, their fixed wiring, which in order in order to make the the, the plant and tooling more flexible, right. and they would also very much like to modernise their state of existing wireless systems. Because a lot of these places do have a wide range of recondite radio radio networks. Okay, a lot of whom have fairly serious security problems. You may have seen the recent Trend Micro white paper about about hacking crane remote controlled cranes. <laughs> It was, it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does sound a bit worrying. So, yeah, I would like to see... So, I've seen interest in this from at and I've seen interest in this from Nokia Networks. I've seen interest in, this, interest in this from a couple of other vendors. And what I am concerned about, though, is how, well the, is how quickly the standardisation is going on for this. Right, OK. There is a, there is a, a 3GPP a study item for 5G local network but it's not likely to be with us until well into release 16. Okay, yes, which is a, a, a way off yet. From, from the enterprise side of things, do you sense that there is um, any excitement about what 5G might deliver, or is it kind of, are, are they not really getting caught up in the, in the hype cycle? There are various, various industrial customers are, doing, are taking part in the trials with more or less enthusiasm. There might be a surprising amount of interest in just pure broad, broadband. Right. There, right. Are, there are quite a few companies, do, for example, retailers, who would like to open stores quickly, to run pop-ups, to do the, this sort of thing. Okay. And in these cases, very often, uh, one of the slowest processes involved is getting a fixed, a fixed internet connection. Right. Yeah. Whereas if you can just roll up and switch it on, that's obviously uh, advantageous. Okay. Also, there's still a surprising amount of people out there who would like very much to have real competition to the fixed broadband provider. Yes, right. And <laughs> if you look at the, the performance that they get, some of the, they're getting out of the 5G and the fixed wireless domain, 
that's going to be interesting. Mm. Yes. Now, this is bread and butter, but then bread and butter is, a sta is part of your staple diet. <laughs> right. Well, also, I think we already see signs that some of the, the, the major service providers are going to, as it were, cannibalise some of their fixed-line services yeah. well, to make sure that somebody else doesn't take it away from them. So. Well, yeah, this is pretty much the strategy that, that both AT&T and Verizon announced, is, they, is they're building fibre where they want to do that, and they want, would like to replace the copper beyond that with fixed wireless. Yeah. So it's fibre fibre to the home or to the business in relatively dense areas and fibre to the, to the tower. Elsewhere. Yeah. There's a lot of sense to that. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Well, it sounds like there's plenty for enterprises to yep. be finding out about and uh, from, from the Barcelona event. I look forward to your analysis uh, after you. the show. Alex, thanks very much. Thank you.